Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. And yes, I'm still here in this shirt, in this room with the fan, yada, yada, yada. Welcome back to A Lovely Junt, where we read better, not more. So in the never-ending quest to break the YouTube algorithm, I actually spent some time looking at my analytics. And I've noticed that YouTube does this thing where if one of your videos pops, it sort of like jumps you up to the next level of like viewership. And one of the videos that popped for me is actually my From YA to Classic Lit that I did with Cersei. Which makes sense because it's actually like trying to actually connect with where most of the audience is, which is writing, reading YA books and then also connecting it to something that I'm excited and passionate about, which is classic literature, which is why I made the series in the first place, blah, blah, blah. I originally intended to do one of these once a month when I was making my plans at the beginning of the year, but it turns out it's actually really, really hard to come up with these pairings, to come up with something really meaningful um, in the connection between the books. But that's okay. I have one for you today. The YA book for today is Scythe, as you saw from the cover. So can you guess what classic work as I get started? Like right now, can you guess what um, book I'm going to suggest you read with it? Okay, so I actually really enjoyed this work. Let's talk about Scythe a little bit and then I'll answer that question more towards the end. I talked about it briefly before and today I want to dive into the genre of utopian fiction. I talked about the concept of dystopian fiction in The Handmaid's Tale and I'll link that up above. I would describe Scythe as utopian fiction. Why? Because we have a society in the future that attempts to be and seems to have achieved something better than what we have right now. Of course, the key word is seems to be better, right? So utopian fiction also has this be careful what you wish for kind of overtone. And yet it's not a future in which humanity has destroyed itself and people are clearly worse off because they made these ro robots that have taken over the world, see Terminator or like we destroyed it with like nuclear warfare or something, see the matrix or through our, our overconsumption has made some people really wealthy through the extreme suffering of the vast majority, see the Hunger Games. So those are all dystopian in focus, right? So it's showing a future that's worse off than one that we're in right now. Instead, in Scythe, we have a world that has eradicated death, no more disease, no more old age, no accident or natural disaster from which you cannot recover and recover quickly and fairly painlessly, right? But now, of course, that introduces the problem of overpopulation. And the philosophical question is, if everyone can live, how do you decide who gets to live? Our main characters, Citra and Rowan, are training to become scythes who have the authority to perform gleanings, which is basically institutionalized death. We're introduced to several different philosophies as to how to answer this question. So their mentor, Scythe Faraday, combines logic and compassion. Scythe Curie attempts to emulate death uh, as it once wants, both random and unexpected. And Scythe Goddard uses his position to gain power for himself, corrupted himself, but also a corrupting force in the society. I really enjoyed this meditation on institutionalized death, like what makes a good life and a bad life? Is it fair to even judge a life? Is it proper to give someone notice or should death come for you unseen and unexpected? I liked how there were multiple legitimate ways to answer this question. And layered upon this question, it, upon all of this is obviously a question of power and corruption as previously mentioned. With Scythe Goddard, we see an obvious avenue for someone to take advantage of their position, which introduces another question. How does such a par powerful segment of society be self-regulating? So I find that a lot of utopian fiction deal with questions about regulating life, death, reproduction, um, and because we contend with these issues in very real ways every day, we have to contend with our own mortality. We have to contend with fam how families and societies are organized. And nature has imposed these rules and ramifications on us from the outside. Imagining a future where those rules are bent or broken allows us to go beyond the pragmatism of simply having to deal with death, pregnancy, disease, and fidelity to attempt to understand the purpose of life, death, family, etc., etc., at a more abstracted level. So with that in mind, the book that I want to pair with Scythe is, it's my drum roll, A Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Now, while Scythe sort of extracts humanity, if you will, out of the death problem, a brave new world extracts humanity out of the reproductive and family problem. Actually, the giver is another sort of 
utopian type book that tries to control sexuality as well and that would be good for younger readers or more sensitive readers because it deals with it in a lot lighter way than a brave new world a brave new world is pretty dark and pretty intense so if you're looking for a lighter pairing go with the giver and it, it would still pair well with this with scythe for similar reasons so in this dystopian future humans are constructed in labs designed for prescribed roles in life and so this they control the intelligence and the outcome of what these babies these test tube babies will will be so this novel looks intensely at the question of free will and purpose, but it also extracts sexuality from pragmatism. Literally, baby making is in a test tube, and it shows unexpectedly how that, as a result, it extracts sexuality from intimacy as well. And a warning for readers, so this is why I give like the alternative pairing of the giver. I do not recommend this book for those who may have been victims of sexual abuse especially as a child there are no scenes of sexual abuse or anything like that at all in this book it's just the way in which sexual activity is reframed when it has no context of family so that should that's like super vague but that's just my recommendation <laughs> Again, so while Scythe deals with the question of death, of extermination of the end of life, A Brave New World by contrast deals with its corollary, birth, the beginning of life, family, and origin, A Brave New World is a lot more pessimistic than Scythe, and a lot less fun to read, I would say. Uh, but taken together, I think, I don't know quite how to say this, it highlights how death and disease is a real problem that we should try to eradicate. It works from a reality in which we have overcome many diseases, as we have today. We have secured ourselves from many threats, and we have seen life flourish as a result of that. It also highlights, this pairing together highlights that however rife with problems and struggle and difficulty are, is sexuality in our lives and family life, however difficult that may be, it's not actually a real problem that needs to be like eradicated in and of itself. It shows how solving the tragedy of human relations is not getting rid of meaningful relationships, but in pushing through them, in pushing through our problems and our tragedy and our imperfections. So that's what I have for you today. Let me know what book you would pair with Scythe. I would love to know what other books sort of deal with similar or correlated issues. Until next time, I'm Alexandra, and I'm still a bibliophile.